There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet, finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Did you know that Johnny Depp and your budget have a lot in common? Don't believe me? You're going to find out in today's Best Of episode. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Gaines. It will expand your brain. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas if that's what you celebrate. If not, then hopefully you're enjoying a wonderful day off. Put your feet up on the couch, watch the Christmas story in constant reruns. I think we know it just about every single word of it here in this house. That's really shameful to admit. But, you know, it's a great story, right? And it's about a place that I come from, Indiana. So I have to watch it over and over and over again. But hopefully this is a day for you to catch your breath, get ready for the new year. Hope you have some amazing New Year's plans. And I wanted to bring you some best of episodes this week, some episodes that everybody has loved. And today is a great one. It's about budgeting for your life and not your bank account. And I'm going to show you what Johnny Depp and your budget have in common. You'd be surprised at the similarities. All right. Have you seen the news? I mean, this just shocked me. Actually, it's not that shocking, but it it is pretty shocking. So Johnny Depp, right? We all know Johnny Depp. He's a little kooky, a little crazy. Um, Some think he's super hot ladies or even some guys that may be listening to this podcast. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Johnny Depp. I think he's I mean, he's definitely um, a true actor, right? He's a creator, originator. um, But there are a lot of people that love Johnny Depp. But besides the point, whether you like Johnny Depp or not like Johnny Depp, that's not the point of this podcast. The point is, is that Johnny Depp is an alleged compulsive spender. He spends nearly, now are you sitting down, are you ready for this, $2 million a month, right? Right. Crazy stuff like $30,000 on wine bills and lots of other lavish expenses. He has over 14, reportedly, over or allegedly, I guess I should say, over 14 different homes all over the place. 
And this all came out of a massive, massive, huge lawsuit that he won against his former managers, many of those managers who contended that he's his spending is super out of control. Now, I don't know about you, but I would really love, like, give me just one month, right, where my job is to spend $2 million a month. Because I honestly, like, I was thinking about this as I was putting this podcast together. I'm not quite sure I could do it. I mean, I of course I could do it, right? I could buy a couple houses or I could literally take everybody in my entire life out on a ginormous shopping spree. But think about $2 million a month over and over and over again. That is a, that is, a, I mean, that's $24 million a year that you're spending and just on, on stuff. Stuff, right? And I think what's so, um, I guess, charged about this is that Johnny Depp is not alone, right? And, you know, whether he can or can't spend that money is sort of besides the point. But but the point is, is look, at some point, even Johnny Depp is going to run out of money, right? If, if you're spending that much money, um, even if he's making, let's say he's making 20 million bucks on a movie, right? He's still overspending by $4 million easily. And, um, so you can start to see how this sort of compulsive spending habit where, especially with somebody who's in that financial position, you think there's just no possible way that I'm actually going to run out of money. And it may be the case. I mean, hopefully he's like invested his money really well. And, um, hopefully he's spending the interest on his money. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not looking behind the scenes. I'm just sort of speculating here. But the point is, is that he's actually not alone. So there was a a recent um, research study that came out by the American Journal of Psychology, and they found that 6% of Americans are actually compulsive buyers, and that this really happened with the advent of online shopping. Um, You know, everything's so easy now, right? Everything's just like a push of a button, and you could buy anything. I mean, I know even on Amazon, I'm totally guilty of it. Like I'll, I'll just buy something. And then in the next minute, I'm like, oh wait, I forgot about this. And I forgot about that. And if it starts to feel like fake money, it starts to to feel like a little bit like monopoly spending. And I think especially as millennials, this is really where the, the, the rubber meets the road, right? This is really where it's tough to, manage your money in in a society like this where everything's so like in your face and then on top of that you know you've got debt or student loans or whatever else you know is kind of the the hindrance so it's like all these factors like coming at you at once and so this really made me think you know i i spend a lot of time working with clients on budget and and not just budget like you're thinking like not just boring budget i mean i really spend a lot of time thinking about how can I translate budget in a way that makes sense, that is approachable, that is, dare I say, even fun, even like a activity that you like to do. I know that for many of you listening, that may be like, she's talking crazy. Um, But I I promise you, like I spend a lot of time thinking about this. And I, I really think I've come up with some ways of doing this because I see light bulbs go off for people. And, you know, uh, early on in my career, I had, I'd really done a lot of stuff with budgeting and I was kind of getting depressed because I was like, here I am a certified financial planner. Like I know all these complex topics, but people are calling me to work with them are really around budget things. And I, I got a little depressed, like, but wait, I can do things more complex. And it really was my, my mentor and dear friend who said to me, you know what, like people need help with this because, this is really the start of of everything, you know, knowing how to budget and, and actually enjoying the process enough so that you do it. And I think over the years, you know, I really realized like, okay, at the crux, this is really at the crux for most anyone. And it is, again, regardless of income, uh, working with people who make millions of dollars a year and are living paycheck to paycheck. So this is not something that is just uh, happening 
to you like right when you're out of college or right when you get your first job. I mean, and, and I've, what I find is it happens like over and over again through people's lives. We just, again, I can say this like a million times. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about money. It's not a dinner time conversation. It's not something that, um, <laughs> that, you know, is, is fun for us. And, um, you know, I think I talked about this on the last podcast, but, uh, Jeff and my husband, he's always like saying to me, you know what, <laughs> Shauna, like people, people don't want to talk about money. You think about money all the time because this is your job, but people don't want to, they don't want to talk about this stuff. And I'm like, well, obviously you guys are listening for a reason. So hopefully it's that you're listening to like pick up some gems here or there. But, um, and I try my best to make this as fun as like humanly possible. I realize I'm not like a comedian or I'm not, I'm not even a musician. Like I don't really have a whole lot of other talents other than, um, I'm pretty badass with budgeting and um, I make a really mean risotto. I can cook pretty well. I can cook pretty well. I can hold my own with cooking. But uh, besides that and some like kind of crazy athletic skills, I was a semi-pro tennis player when I was young. Uh, but other than that, like I, I don't I, there's not much else I have to offer you. You know, I love music. I love listening to music. I love to pretend like I'm on stage giving a concert. Um, but, but I don't really have any other skills than this. So but this is pretty much hopefully why you're, why you're listening to this podcast. But so I came up with this idea, you know, after seeing this, this overspending that Johnny Depp was doing, and I'm like, oh, you know what, maybe this is even a new twist for me to approach, you know, the dirty B word, the dirty budgeting word. And what I wanted to ask you was, you know, what does it mean to budget for your life? and not your bank account. What the heck am I actually talking about? Well, you know, I can talk to you all day about things like the 50, 20, 30 budgeting rule, right? So 50% of your take-home pay goes to your fixed expenses. Those are the things that you absolutely have to pay, including like minimum credit card payments and things like that, that you, groceries, right? Because you got to eat, things that you have to pay. 20% then should go to uh, your savings, which includes stuff like your 401k, your IRA, your Roth, but then also your emergency fund and all of those, you know, savings for traveling and and buying a house and starting a family, all of that is 20% of your take-home pay. And then the last 30% is for the funsies, the variable expenses, the stuff that you really want to do first, but you got to pay all the other stuff that you got to pay, right? So I can talk to you about that rule kind of all day long, but it it might not work for you or it might not actually make sense, you know, and, and I really understand that. Like, I understand that more than you think, right? Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. 
In four weeks, the typical new user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news? Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Want to know the number one money question I'm asked? It's how to get started investing without being overwhelmed. So if you're asking yourself the same question, then you have to check out the Investing for Beginners podcast. The hosts, Dave and Andrew, they break down investment terms and strategies in a way you can finally understand. I love that they're making investing accessible and they have an entire podcast dedicated to helping you invest better. Even if you're not ready to start investing, they explain the stock market and financial updates so you can really understand what is being said on the news. If you're ready to learn more about investing, I'd recommend you start with two of my favorite episodes. Listener Q&A, how do you start investing with a thousand bucks, where they explain how you get started right away. And back to basics of building your portfolio, where they explain how to build a portfolio from scratch. The Investing for Beginners podcast is a great way to start expanding your relationship with money. Find Investing for Beginners podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. But like, let's just pretend, let's say your your downfall is, is shopping online, right? And you just like, you get off on clicking and purchasing stuff. But the reality is you can't remove the button on your computer to purchase it, right? I mean, there's, 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 we can't we can't do that. We can't we can't have the internet without the shopping buttons. But you can set a boundary around that for yourself. And like what if you could put all that you wanted to from all the online sites in your cart? However, you only had one day, let's just say Sundays, where you could actually buy something. So the the boundary is that on those Sundays, you have to have a money date with yourself or your partner first, then you're allowed to purchase what you want in those carts, right? So you could spend all week like putting all this crap in a cart, but you can't actually hit the buy button until Sundays, but only after you've actually spent like a few minutes, I'm not talking more than like five or 10 minutes looking at your money situation, right? Because what's going to happen is you're going to look at that card and you're going to go, uh, all right. So realistically, I only got like a hundred bucks I can spend here. So what is it that I really want or that I really need to get right now? Or sometimes you're going to go, oh, I don't even really need anything, right? Chances are you're going to go back to that card. You're going to remove some things. You're going to look at your money situation and you're going to decide, right? So it's, it's the reality check. It's budgeting for your life, for what is actually realistic in your life, not just your bank account. Because your bank account may actually lie to you. Depending on where you are in the month, where, you know, when you just got paid, you might be really quote unquote rich, right? You might have a lot of money in there, but 
what actually has to get paid out might take up all of that money. So there may not be that hundred bucks in there for your, your shopping fetish, but there might be, right? And there might be, maybe it's not the first week of the month, but maybe it's the third week of the month when, all right, you know, you can look at your money and go, yeah, I got an extra hundred bucks in here. So let me go and like go crazy, you know, until I've spent that hundred bucks, right? So it's, it's a visualization of what's going on in your bank account that's going to make this make more sense to you than just creating a sheet or using an app and you fill in all the money. It just, it doesn't have a, a connection, right? Um, let's say eating out is your thing. I mean, if I could eat out every meal, I love to cook. I really love to cook, but I also love to like go hang out with my husband, go have some drinks, go have a meal. I, I love it, right? Especially on the weekend. It's like really when I feel like I want to go out to eat. I've just worked my butt off during the week. I want to go out to eat. But again, it's it's a reality check. So eating out's your thing, right? Maybe you, you create a challenge to only go out four times a month or three times a month. It's so much easier to budget that way than to say, all right, I have $300 a month I can spend eating out. Chances are you're going to go over that limit. You're going to go over the $300. But if you say, I got three or four times a month I can go out to eat, right? Go out to eat one time, all right, check off. Second time, check off. Third time, check off. Okay, but I know in the back of my head that I really cumulatively don't want to spend over 300 bucks. So what I can do is like, okay, I went out to eat one time. That's 50 bucks. All right, I got 250 left, right? So it helps you start uh, creating a tally for these things, but it really gives a vision, for this stuff, when you put this visualization behind your budget, you can, um, you can really achieve it. So I I say, make a budget of pictures. I know this sounds stupid and silly, but I swear to you, I have spent so much time with so many different people that I know this works. Draw it out, right? Only buy on Sundays, four dinners a week. I only go to grocery with a list. Then put a picture of what you're saving for because what's super important is, and the whole reason you're doing any of this crap to begin with, is what is that thing? What are you playing for? What what is it that you're doing all of this for, right? Is it that you want to have that awesome honeymoon or that that amazing trip? Maybe you want to start a family or buy a new home. Um, You want to start a business. Maybe you want to quit your job. Uh... I I mean, there's, it could be big things. It could be tiny things. It could be a little thing, right? Maybe it's like you're playing for that. You want to have a hundred bucks to play online and, and, and buy yourself some new clothes. I don't know, whatever it is, it's, it's different for you, right? But if each month you have something you're playing for and you can visually see it, you can visually see it. That is where you're going to really start connecting and making changes. Because I, I, again, I say this to everyone, what you're playing for, it's in your bank account. It's in your bank account right now. Now, the whole amount might not be there. Let's say you're saving, you know, you want to save five grand for a trip. Well, you're probably not going to have five grand sitting in your bank account, right? But you're going to have a fraction of it. And if you can figure out, okay, it's going to take me nine months, nine fractions. If I, if I set these kind of boundaries for myself in nine months, I can go on that trip, right? So every month or every week or uh, every day, depending on what works best for you, I need to look at those, set those boundaries, right? Those four dinners out that I can only shop on Sundays on, or I can only buy on Sundays. I got to have one money day to week. Like I got to set these boundaries and I'm going to put a picture of that awesome place that I'm saving for right there to remind me why the heck I'm doing this, right? Because again, I can give you so many different rules, so many different rules, and they're not going to, I mean, you 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 get them, you're smart, you get the rules, but it doesn't have an impact on you. What has an impact is what am I playing for? And then what are the boundaries I need to do? What is the visualization behind it? so that I can get there. And it's not a perfect science. Some months, it's not going to work. And I'm going to be honest with you, even with me, you know, all of these different things that I talk to you about are stuff that we do ourselves, but sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you go over budget. Sometimes you're under budget. Sometimes the, you need four new tires on your car and it just 
it all gets screwed up for a couple months. I mean, that's the reality of this. But the point is, is that you pick yourself up, that you start somewhere, that you start even just one small little step that's going to get you closer to that goal, right? Because if you go, if you go, you know what, I hate budgeting. I'm not going to look at my numbers. I don't care where I'm spending my money. Chances are you're, you're going to tread water. You're not going to actually make, it's like swimming against a current, right? You're swimming, swimming, swimming. You're not getting anywhere, right? You got to turn around. You got to swim with the current to actually get to shore. It's the same concept, right? But it's not going to work if you don't want to put in a little, like, I'm not going to say blood. (laughs) I'm going to say a little bit of sweat, maybe a few tears here and there, but you got to, you, you, you got to put some effort into it for this to actually work. And when you do, that is when things start to dramatically change. And I mean, that goes for anything in your life. Well, not just for this, but what I found is like, if you can start visualizing all of uh, of this money stuff, of this budget stuff, you can start putting pictures around it and boundaries around it. Um, and you can actually start seeing yourself achieve things, even if it's just little tiny steps, man, are you going to be motivated to keep going? Um, you're going to be motivated to go, you know what, I'm not going to go out to eat on Thursday because I know I only got one dinner left and I really want to save it for Sundays because I get depressed on Sundays because Monday's the next week. I don't know, whatever, whatever it is for you, right? And even if you're fortunate enough like Johnny Depp to have two million bucks to spend, why would you? right? Um, There's no award for spending all your money as quick as you can. It doesn't exist, right? What you're trying to do is make it last. That's the name of the game while having some fun and um, challenging yourself a little bit, right? Pushing yourself a little bit. You know, what if instead of nine months, you you know, it takes you to save 5k for that awesome, you know, a vacation. What if you end up doing it in four months or five months? Like, that is freaking awesome that you could do that, right? And it's it's possible. I have seen so many things that people thought were impossible for them to find money for or save for. And through just putting some of these things into practice, they were able to achieve it enough so that I know that this is not, um, this is not like a you know, I'm not talking crazy here, right? That this is not some sort of like airy fairy um, dream state. Like this is, this is reality. This is stuff that I know works, but it only works from thinking about it differently and approaching it differently, right? I, I read this quote the other day that um, if I wanted to be like everybody else, I would train like everybody else, but I don't want to be like everyone else. So I got to do something different, right? It's the, it's the same principle here. So what I want you to do is visualize your money. This may sound crazy, but I swear, even if you need to cut out pictures from a magazine, do it. It, that is like, if you could have a visual budget with almost no numbers on the page, Oh man, why why is it that vision boards work so well for people? People who are super rich have vision boards because it's the power of visualizing this stuff. So, what is my goal? What am I playing for? What are you playing for? What are you what are you in for? This day, this week, this month, this year? How can you break it down so it makes sense, right? Like the four dinners a week. Only I can only buy something on a Sunday. What what is it for you? How can you achieve this? And take it a week at a time or a day at a time. Take it in a small dose so that you can like applaud yourself for achieving this, for hitting these marks. And that's what I mean about budgeting for your life, not your bank account, right? Budget for your your life, what 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 you actually want to achieve, right? Not just, you know, Johnny Depp's got 50 million bucks in a bank account, right? So he can just spend like nobody's business. No, budget for your life. What makes sense for you? Visualize the heck out of this stuff, right? And then watch yourself smash goals like you will not believe. So the moral of the story is that you have to make budgeting work for your life, for your own particular situation. And whatever that looks like for you, that's the way it works for you, right? There are all these rules that you should follow and not follow, but when it comes down to it, you just have to figure out what fits for your life. Hey, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. It's absolutely free and you'll make sure you never miss an episode of Millennial Money. 
You can also listen to all our episodes on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, and Pandora. 